Welcome ladies. In this video, we're going to discuss why you would be better choosing testosterone over the likes of Anavar, Prima Bowen, or Winstrel. And the reasons why. So in this video, I just want to clear up why it would be a better choice to choose a testosterone than it would be over these other oral administrations of steroids when we're looking for athletic pursuits and athletic performance. So with steroids being more easily accessible than ever, a lot of women are following suit with men and looking to increase muscle mass, decrease body fat, and generally have a really good physique. So we're often then told for women that Anavar is really safe. Anavar's safe for women. <laughs> and then Prima Ball is usually the next, and Winstrel is often in that discussion as well. These are safe for women. It's a bit of a misinformation. What's actually more correct is that they are a better choice or safer than other steroids that men would traditionally use. This is because the other steroids are more likely to have an androgenic effect, which would have virilization impacts on women, which is masculinizing side effects. So just to clear up some of the terminology, deploy, <laughs> if we're going to deploy testosterone, we use some testosterone. Virilization is masculinizing side effects and aromatization, conversion of testosterone to estrogen. Some of the things you might hear thrown around, but you might not actually know what they are. So if we continue the discussion of saying why testosterone is a better choice, first up, we have the fact we can test it on a blood test. Can't test any of these, we can test this on a blood test to see if it's the correct level. Because now we can see the reference range. The reference range for a woman is vastly different from that of a man. For a woman, we're looking at 0.5 to 1.5. For a guy, 9 to 29. But if we were actually to map that out on a chart and look at them at the same length, at the same point, you're gonna both feel shit. <laughs> so for a woman, it's getting below one, you would feel shit because you're gonna be right down at the bottom of this ref. For a guy, we're getting below 12, we're gonna start seeing him. But one thing that I've seen is a lot of women then taking birth control instantly suppress their level of testosterone to a point where they're really gonna struggle to gain muscle, feel good, have a high sex drive, high sexual sensitivity, general well-being, athletic performance, everything else that you really want. If you're a girl trying to train and look your best and birth control is really gonna Fuck that up. <laughs> but one thing that most people are not realizing is that birth control is a hormone and it's having a very similar impact to all of these things. It's gonna mess up your natural hormone production. So if you're gonna take birth control anyway, you may as well add testosterone. At least complete that hormonal profile and put it in a more favorable position. And then you're gonna feel better. And realistically, if you wanna be a woman who's kicking ass and taking names, you wanna level the playing field because the guys are up here at the top of their reference range and the, oh, the ones with high performance are, and then you're right at the bottom and being literally chemically castrated and wondering why you can't perform. Great example of this is one of the girls who spoke to me a couple of years ago and her level was 1.7. So just out of the reference, doctor and said to her, I'm gonna put you on birth control, not to control birth, but because your testosterone is too high. He then dropped her from 1.7, feeling awesome, competing in bodybuilding competitions, high athletic performance, great sex drive, great well-being, awesome, feeling her best to castrated down to 0.5, struggling to gain muscle, always looking skinny fat, low sex drive, low energy, low mood, feeling shit all the time. Most doctors have very poor understanding of any of this stuff. The reason why my laptop is over there is to demonstrate a clear understanding of what we're discussing here. The fact it doesn't need a script, doesn't need to be rehearsed. I'm literally just talking because I have an understanding of this information to be able to convey it to you guys. It's really important to know that. If you go to your GP, they are absolutely clueless. Oh my God, they are so clueless. Even the endocrinologist, if you went there, would probably still say something stupid like, it's too high if you're slightly out of the reference range. Bear in mind, the guy's reference range starts at nine. Girls with PCOS can go up to six or seven. And if you're at 1.7, you're just a gifted athlete. You're not too high. You're just out of the reference range. It is generalization that we give to any blood markers to try and just say what is healthy. But in my opinion, for both men and women, some type of testosterone sits way too low. It should all stay the same, but be increased. I think women should go up to two. I think guys should go up to 35. Because from what I've seen, all you will see is benefits until that point, and then you'll start to see a negative impact. For women, it's more so that we'll start to see a bit of virilization after that point. So we'll start to see hair growth, the total growth, etc. voice deepening. To come back to the topic of the video, <laughs> why is a better choice to choose testosterone over the other commonly used steroids by women, because these two are the same. This is the testosterone amphetamine that a man would typically use. This is a fem test that a woman would typically use in the same setting to get the same kind of results in a replacement dosage or just over that. 250 milligrams per milliliter, 10 milligrams per milliliter. Same raw powder, just very diluted. This has got a very high profit margin. 
This has probably got the highest profit margin of anything that you would buy. However, these two, Anavar and Primo, have one of the smallest profit margins, and the, the raw powder is one of the most expensive. So the likelihood of them being faked is inc incredibly high. These ones are not actually faked, but <laughs> the likelihood of those being faked that you would find, especially if you find it from some guy down the gym, and especially if it's a low price, is gonna be really high. But the problem is, you won't know that. And for a woman, it could be really impactful because we're saying these are safe. They're not safe, but they're better tolerated than something that would be the alternative. For example, Dianabol is one of the cheapest oral anabolic steroids. So someone could swap Primo or Anavar for Dianabol. And if you're a girl, you're just seeing strength increases, you're just feeling really good in the gym, you don't actually realize that it's different because you don't know what you're supposed to feel or what you're supposed to be looking out for because you've only just taken this stuff for the first few days. But that's gonna have a lot more virilization for those masculinizing side effects. However, testosterone, we said, is very unlikely to be fake. And another thing is we can test it on a blood test. So we've got that reference range and we're trying to sit realistically, if your girl's trying to have athletic performance, not just replacement dose, we're trying to be And yes, a doctor would say that's too high, but what you'll see is just all the benefits. That would come from about three to five milligrams for most, but you test it after six to eight weeks and then you, you potentially increase again. Going off, how do you feel? What is happening with your body? Are you seeing unwanted side effects like a deepening of the voice? You could test with a vocal pitch app on your phone. So you test that going through. For any of this stuff, by the way, you should be doing that. Just to see, is your voice actually deepening over time? Because you will start to see that. If you take an Anavar, 10 milligrams, a cycle after cycle, year after year, you will start to see that. More likely than this just being out of the reference range. So just be aware of these kind of things. Are we seeing hair growth? Are we seeing your hair starting to change in texture? And it often goes really dry. Sometimes you can get receding hairlines as well. And this is what we often see with female bodybuilders where the dose are really high. And all these things start to happen. The face starts to reshape. The midsection gets chunky. And that would be a really high side effect. So we're not going to see that off just this very low dose. But it may be wise, if you are going to set aside that reference range, just to keep a really close eye on this stuff and potentially then drop it back down at certain points so you're not running it too high for too long. However, from my experience, I've seen some girls sit at two or just above two. And this is some of the wellness and bikini girls that most of you would say, oh my God, they look amazing. And they do genuinely look amazing. Their voice is exactly the same. Their face, their looks, everything is exactly the same. But they've gained a really good amount of muscle. Not an obscene amount of muscle, but kept that femininity and just gained muscle in the right areas. But bear in mind, training, diet and recovery are all in a really good position. You can't, as a girl, substitute with drugs because you're going to start turning into a, a guy, realistically. And that's the last thing you want. Guys will just trash their health. Most guys substitute with poor training, <laughs> poor diet, poor recovery, with more drugs. And it works to a point, but then they trash their health. We can see that on blood markers. With girls, it's a little bit more subtle. You're not going to see it on a blood test. You're not going to see liver and kidney markers change. Your dosages are not high enough. Even with these, you're not really going to see much of an impact. But you will see very, very subtle change if you pay very close attention that you don't want like your voice permanently changing. And we do see this with a lot of female bodybuilders. But you don't see it with a lot of women on HRT. However, women on HRT report the same things. Oh my God, I feel amazing. <laughs> when, when the testosterone comes in, I feel strong, I've got a good sex drive, I feel amazing. And this is when we can start to see the applications of testosterone because they've already got the estrogen and progesterone in most of the time before the testosterone gets added, especially in the UK. So we've got so many reports of how women feel, what it's looking like on blood tests, what it's doing for them in terms of their quality of life. You don't often see the same with these. You do always see it with this, given the correct dosage, because it's the same thing with guys and girls. And that's why I say it's a much better choice. If you're going to use anything to try and gain more muscle, Use the one that's very unlikely to be faked, because this is from a pharmacy anyway, that's definitely not fake. <laughs> um, and then this, this is very likely to be fake because the profit margin is massive. By going with a better choice that we can test on a blood test, that's very likely to be fake, and that we can actually understand what it does. And that all these are gonna impact your natural hormone levels, and this is gonna put them in a really good place. So we can level out if you're taking birth control especially, you can level everything out, put it in an optimal range, and just be feeling awesome all the time. Because a lot of you girls taking hormone-based birth control anyway, although it would, again, be a better choice to go into a copper coil, so you're not getting any hormones in, potentially put testosterone in, but then that argument goes back and forth, because then if you're gonna put testosterone in, would it be better to stay on the hormones and then just have everything flatlined and just be at your best self to find that the other hormones that would be in the best week, you, you girls all have the best week. Wherever that is, if you actually wanted to plan this properly, on your best week, go and get your bloods done, see where all your hormones are, because they'll fluctuate all the time, but you'll be able to see that snapshot, that's what you want to replicate. Because imagine if you just felt like that all the time. 
you feel pretty good, right? <laughs> so if we can replace enough to be there and then maybe add a little bit of testosterone on top, then you get the athletic performance, you feel your best, your skin's good, your hair's good, you feel awesome, your stomach's flat, you've not got the bloating, you've not got the water retention, everything that you feel shit through your hormone fluctuations through the month, that would be the optimal situation if you really wanted to test it and, and actually use a bit of data properly for it. It's much better to do this stuff than to just get some Anavar and say, because Anavar's safe for girls, because some knob down the gym has said that's a statement. And then you start just running Anavar over and over as a substitute for your potential low testosterone, which is due to birth control, or just general genetic factors. Potential poor diet, which I would say is a factor. Definite poor training, because most people do not train in optimal fashion. I've seen on the gym floor for seven years, watched thousands of people train. Most people in the UK do not train very well. Fat, and then recovery. Most women are highly stressed, don't necessarily sleep that well. <laughs> and that's just one of the things that comes with being a woman, especially stress levels being high. We live in a complicated world. Women are still really fighting to kick ass and take names, which I think, by the way, one of the most attractive things that a woman could do is absolutely be a, a stone cold killer, kicking ass and taking names. It's awesome. And I love the world that we live in, where women are chasing athletic performance, chasing success, chasing being assertive and strong. I think it's amazing. So I want to just put that out there and say that I think it's a really good thing. I'm trying to encourage the usage of these things in the correct way. I don't want people taking bad advice, doing things all wrong. And... Listen to general statements like Anavar's safe for girls. It's not explained in enough detail. I said it's the reason the laptop is away. It's to show you the, the level of detail that should be required if you're going to take advice from someone. If they're not able to explain it in this kind of depth, without rehearsing, without the script, just because they understand it. And this goes for you. <laughs> GPs are clueless. Endocrinologists, which is a hormone specialist, are not much better. It, they can't explain it in this kind of detail. Choose carefully who you're going to take advice from please. Because I've seen so many girls run through bodybuilding, taking dosages that would be higher than you would give someone transitioning from female to male. A few years into bodybuilding, they don't win the pro card or whatever they were trying to do with the blinkers on saying, I don't care about my femininity. One day they look in the mirror and go, what have I done to myself? And they quit and they disappear. And I've seen it time and time again. I've been in this industry a long time. Please do not be one of these people. And if you're not competing, be even more careful. If you're not competing, please just try and go high replacement dosage if you're going to use any of this stuff you'll see an increase if you're not seeing an increase in performance and muscle gain and lean body mass on that it's not the drugs that are the problem it's the diet training and recovery that's a problem and it's the same for guys i'm not just beating on girls here it's the same for most people i hate it that people try and substitute all the really important variables with just more drugs i don't want to see women ruin their looks and really regret their decision especially if it's just in bad advice or taking drugs that were faked and they weren't what they were supposed to be so please be careful <laughs> if you have any questions please do reach out. I want to be seen as a source of good information, which is why we're putting this information out for you guys now, to try and help some people get empowered with the knowledge they need to get the results they want. So ladies, hopefully this has helped give you more clarity. Please do reach out if you've got any questions and I will catch you on the next one.